tonight fighting the Greenwood fire from the sky. We'll take you to the Ely Airport to meet the aviation crews. And that fight continues on the ground as firefighters use today's more cooperative weather to try and contain the flames. And while the fires are to the north, people across the region are being impacted as smoke and haze fill the sky. From CBS3 Duluth, this is the CBS3 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. Thanks for joining us. The Greenwood fire burning near Isabella is now almost 20,000 acres in size. Thankfully, it's not growing nearly as quickly as it did yesterday. Here is new video taken from inside the Greenwood fire. It was sent to us from a crew trying to protect structures and clear out debris along Highway 2 yesterday. But when the situation got more dangerous, they were among the crews that had to leave. You can see flames have swallowed most of the forest floor. Now, the fire took off yesterday, more than doubling in size to the north and east and crossing Highway 1. Lake County crews expanded the evacuation zone, telling people at an additional 159 homes and cabins to leave in a hurry. Flames burned through properties on McDougal Lake, although we're still awaiting word on damage to structures. Crews were headed back into those areas today and tonight to survey potential destruction. The wind is blowing from the opposite direction as yesterday, limiting the fire's eastward progress today. No injuries have been reported. The fire was started by a lightning strike back on August 15th. A reminder tonight, the Greenwood Fire Evacuation Shelter has moved. It's now being housed at Babbitt City Hall. And within the last hour, we learned that shelter will now be open overnight. You are encouraged to bring your own pillows, blankets, and other essentials. The previous shelter in Finland is now closed. As the Greenwood fire continues, crews from across the country have made their way to the Northland to assist. That includes our Northland airports, who are now home base for many aircraft and pilots fighting the fire from the sky. CBS 3's Natalie Grant is live for us at the Ely Airport tonight. Natalie, how are the smoky conditions impacting the fight from the air? Well, Kristen, officials here at the Ely International Airport tell me that this tarmac is much calmer than it was yesterday, partially due to those kind of calmer fire conditions, but also due to that smoke and haze that's been lingering in our area. It's really compromised visibility, and for a while, it couldn't allow choppers and planes to take off. Now, since we last checked in with you at 5 o'clock, you can see over here there's some things that are starting to happen again. You can see that there's some planes getting ready if they need to, if they're waiting orders currently right now to get sent back out to the fire. We have seen about three helicopters take off within the last hour and come back after dumping water over on the Greenwood area. Now here at the tanker base in Ely, they house planes and choppers from across the world that are dropping water and fire retardant solution from the sky, hoping to suppress the flames or protect homes and cabins. Now, for example, you'll see behind me this quite large tanker. This thing can hold 3,000 gallons of that red fire retardant solution that officials are really crediting for saving structures in the way of the Greenwood fire. Now, with that fire rapidly growing, proximity is key. Officials tell me that it's just a four-minute flight from here to the fire and back again. Kevin Merrill with the U.S. Forest Service aviation team says the closer they are to the fire, the better. It makes all the difference in the world. Depending on the tool that we have with the different kinds of aircraft, be it water droppers, retardant droppers, just having stuff close. It's just more product getting to the line, getting to the fire, helping out the folks on the ground. Now, as I did mention, conditions have gotten better here throughout the day. Since we've been here within the last hour, a couple of those choppers have taken off and landed back again, but they are currently awaiting orders to see where these planes and choppers are most needed. But for now, I'll send things back to you in the studio, Kristen. Natalie Grant in Ely for us tonight. Thank you, Natalie. The John Eck fire burning in the Boundary Waters just about doubled in size yesterday. Forest Service now estimate it's at 1,500 acres. That's because of extreme fire weather yesterday. The fire stretches from John Eck Lake to the southeast corner of Elton Lake. And the Welt Fire also grew slightly, now burning 60 acres, five miles northwest of Sawbill Lake. It was at 50 acres yesterday. A lightning strike also started that fire. People living on the Gunflint Trail are being asked to get ready in case the John Eck fire forces them to leave their homes. Right now, that area is not under an evacuation order, but yesterday, the Cook County Sheriff's Office said their teams are going door to door, notifying people it is a possibility. 
Anyone choosing to voluntarily evacuate should go to the YMCA in Grand Marais. Make sure you check in so they have a record of you being there and not at your property. The sheriff asks anyone voluntarily evacuating to turn on their sprinkler system before they leave and gather medications, pet supplies or other essentials. Here's a live look from Spirit Mountain tonight after a day of thick smoke in the region. If you woke up this morning wondering if your house was on fire, well, you definitely were not alone. The smell of smoke remains strong in the Duluth area. A wind shift carried the smoke from wildfires burning two hour north further south. Some rain this morning has helped clear some of that smoke, but the fire department is still advising people to keep their windows closed. And it wasn't only Duluth experiencing the poor air quality. Here's a look at Babbitt this morning, just west of the road closures associated with the Greenwood fire. A similar story in Ely, where the downtown area was blanketed with smoke as well. And here's another look from Ely's White Iron Lake. We're barely able to make out there's even a lake there, but there is. If you have pictures or video of how your community has been impacted by the fires, please send them to us at newstips at cbs3duluth.com. Well, Dave joins us now for a first check of the weather. Dave, many, many, many folks across the region really impacted by that smoke and haze and poor air quality. That is true. So let's start by taking a look at a map showing the air quality alert, which stretches from Kuchichin County through all of St. Louis County, even down through Carleton County, and then, of course, Lake and Cook counties on the Minnesota side of life. Wisconsin and Michigan off the hook for now, but that smoke could with waft that way as time goes on as well. We'll have to be on alert. Speaking of alerts, there's also a beach hazard alert in effect tonight till at least 10 o'clock in the evening. Some sources say till 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Bottom line is don't go swimming on Park Point or Wisconsin Point. Rip currents are a definite possibility. And at the same time, then for the shoreline, we're looking at a small craft advisory. Not a great night for boating either. And the winds are kicking up because of low pressure systems trying to bring some rain. We did get a little this morning for many towns, and I will be showing a chart of how much has fallen so far. But bottom line, we haven't received everything we need, and we haven't received everything we're going to get yet. There's still a 30 to 50% chance for more rain tonight. So the short-term forecast says there's that 30% shot for the rain with lows near 60 for a lot of towns, followed by a brief break in the act a mostly sunny sky for Wednesday with a high back up towards 75. But another round of rain could be with us as early as Thursday, and that one may be a little more persistent than this first one, and we'll talk more about it in a few more minutes. Thank you, Dave. People fighting the Greenwood fire have been hard at work all week, especially so during the last 24 hours when the fire made its rapid spread. CBS 3's Kendall Jarbo is live in Isabella for us tonight. Kendall, that area saw a lot of wind and smoke yesterday. What is it like out there today? Kristen, weather conditions right now out here east of the fire is much more favorable today than it was yesterday. I've been out here all day. What I've noticed is cooler temperatures and until just recently, a lot of cloud coverage. Fire officials tell me this weather, along with some support from the community, is making it much easier to fight the flames. The Greenwood fire made its largest run yet Monday, forcing firefighters to evacuate their original post. Stunning video of the flames is evidence they made the right call. We always emphasize public and firefighter safety, and in fact, we just absolutely do not compromise in terms of firefighter safety. No one was hurt in the process. Clark McCready with the Eastern Area Incident Management Team says that's thanks to good planning and clear communication. It was one of the most wonderfully well-coordinated efforts to move people out of harm's way that I've experienced in about 20 years. 40 different volunteer fire departments are assisting with nearly 100 units deployed. Crews from across the nation are coming to Minnesota to help stop the fire. As conditions calmed down, many of those firefighters were back at the impacted areas Tuesday, trying to protect more structures. In hearing news about the wildfires, people may wonder what they can do to help. Well, McCready says it's signs like these that do more than we may think. You just can't help but smile when you see one of those signs. It's a great effort. It's meaningful, and we appreciate it. 
From east of the fire to the west, from Isabella to Ely, roads lined with displays of people showing support for first responders. A small act leaving a big impact. Posting a sign isn't the only way you can help firefighters during this time. McCready recommends making a donation to volunteer fire departments in the name of those fighting the Greenwood Fire. Kristen? Yes, and they certainly deserve all the thanks that we can give them. Thank you so much, Kendall. And today, there are more than 400 people who are fighting the Greenwood Fire. Our thanks to all of them. Well, Duluth students are now ready for the fall, all thanks to the helping hands of our community. School and city leaders hosted a back-to-school event at the deck today, handing out supplies and offering helpful resources to kids and their families. There was even a job fair, a food giveaway, and outdoor games to play. Scott Van Dale with Chum told us it was great to see all of these Duluth partners come together under one roof for the same cause. Normally we're just stuck in a parking lot by ourselves, so um, this year's a little more fun and, and a little more interactive for parents and families just in general to get all the supplies they need. Thanks to Essential Health, students were even able to get a COVID-19 vaccine. In the coming weeks, the hospital also plans to offer more vaccine clinics at some local schools. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3, an update from Essential Health as their Vision Northland project is nearing a big milestone. Details in just a few minutes. Rain today did come to the tune of two tenths of an inch here in the Twin Ports. We do need more, and up north they got less than that. Some places got a little more. Still a little more could come tonight, followed by a better chance later on this week. We'll talk about when and where and for how long coming up after our break. You're watching the CBS 3 News at 6 with Kristen Vaki, Sports with Kelly Hinson, and Weather with Meteorologist Dave Anderson on Live Local CBS 3. One of our biggest furniture events of the year, the Labor Day Sale at Slumberland. Take an additional 25% off our already low prices. Well... Hello, Slumberland. Get your look for less at the huge Labor Day sale at Slumberland. We can help you at Ketamine North Infusion Center. In public safety, we see things that sometimes you can't unsee. After these infusions, everything just kind of turned around and I was able to start enjoying things again. To learn more, give us a call or visit us online. Your home improvement company has industry-leading materials and warranties on all of our window and bathroom products. We also certify all of our installers in our installation training center. Right now, we are offering 20% off all products and zero down, zero interest, and zero payments until 2023. Call us today or go online to book your appointment. If you want your project done right the first time, go with your home improvement company where it's your home made better. Important healthcare announcement. If people tell you your TV is too loud or if listening in some environments has become difficult, we are requesting your participation in a special program called the 30-Day Challenge. Hearing Life Hearing Centers are seeking people with hearing difficulties to evaluate a new digital mini hearing aid now being released. To take part in this event, you must call. Please get a pencil and write down the number below. All people with hearing aids or hearing difficulties are wanted to take part in the 30-day challenge evaluating a new high-tech device that sits discreetly behind your ear. This hearing aid is Bluetooth enabled and is rechargeable. All hearing assessments are performed at no charge for those taking part in the challenge. Participants will try these hearing aids for 30 days. Call the number below and take the Hearing Life 30-day challenge. When you watch CBS 3, you get up-to-date team coverage online, on your phone, and on the air. This evening, as we enter the overnight hour. Right down to your neighborhood. For local weather coverage you can trust, tune to CBS 3. Incredible savings on mattresses during our Labor Day sale now at Slumberland. Sealy Posturepedic all on sale, starting as low as $4.99. And we're one of the only stores reducing waste through our mattress recycle programs. Shop now at Slumberland. I'm leaving the studio and hitting the road. I'm making house calls. Dr. Phil. 
That's a teachable moment. I'm like a dog with a bone. The difference between winners and losers is winners do things losers don't want to do. Carrying a grudge is like letting somebody live in your head for free. When you're in a hole, stop digging. And they are digging. I'm not leaving here, so you people either need to get real or shut up a cot for me. CBS News Sunday Morning with Jane Pauley on CBS. CBS 3 Weather is brought to you by St. Luke's. Now, the CBS 3 Duluth Weathermax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. Well, just in case you didn't catch them at 5, we're going to take a look at the rain that's fallen today. And you know, yesterday I was crunching the numbers, and at least here in Duluth, you know, we're about six inches shy of normal for the year so far. Today tried to help out a little bit with two tenths of an inch here in the Twin Ports, but up north where they really need rain, didn't get that much. You know, if we squint and grin and bear it just a little bit, we could say a tenth of an inch fell from Bemidji to Hibbing towards the Ely area and then down towards Two Harbors. While it was a little bit better for Solon Springs at a third of an inch and a quarter of an inch around Hayward. So not much here today. Still a 30 to 50 percent chance for more tonight, followed by a break tomorrow with sunshine. But that in turn is followed by a better rain chance begins on Thursday. And that one won't be a one-day event. That could last all the way through the week. And we'll show it to you on the seven-day forecast in a bit. But first, of course, we'll show the current conditions from Duluth International, where it's 70. Relative humidity is 65%, and since it's a little juicier in the atmosphere with humidity, hopefully that helps uh, the firefighters as well with their battle. Easterly winds going 13 miles per hour. That's a little too fast, perhaps. That's probably egging on the fire risk. Air pressure at the moment is holding steady at 1,012 millibars, which is just a little bit lower than normal. And it's lower than normal because of the effect of three low-pressure systems, which we'll show you on a map here shortly. But right now we show you the temperatures. Upper Peninsula, 76 to 78. Northern Wisconsin looks like we're running anywhere from 67 in Superior to 78 degrees in Hayward. And for Minnesotans, we're looking at cooler by the lake right now, 59 to about 70 degrees. And farther inland, a little bit warmer, upper 70s, for example, for Hibbing. Tomorrow, we equalize a little bit and run roughly 75 to 80. And it could actually be warmer by the lake tomorrow, thanks to a northwesterly wind. Doppler map right now shows not much in the way of rain happening at the moment, but it did earlier in the day, as you saw, that line of wake-up showers running through much of the area, especially the central parts of our region. The northern parts didn't pay off that much, but again, still a 30 to 50 percent chance for more precip as our night goes on from the action of three low-pressure systems working through the area. Then for Wednesday, higher pressure makes it sunny for a day, but already by Thursday, a trio of low-pressure systems gathering to the west will start to work towards us. And even though they're just troughs right now, which we could say is a baby low-pressure system, hopefully they will mature when they get to our area and bring us good chances of rain from Thursday through Sunday. So here comes the seven-day forecast. We'll take a look at the odds each in one of those days. Tonight in Minnesota, the odds are 30% for more rain, with lows from 54 inland to 63 by the lake. In Wisconsin and Michigan, it's a 50% chance for rain with lows near 60. And tomorrow, sunshine, Wisconsin, Michigan, high 75 to 80. Sunshine, Minnesota, 76 by the lake, but 70 to 75 inland. The extended forecast calls for 30 to 60 percent chances for rain Thursday through Sunday, with the best chances being a 48-hour block Friday and Saturday. High temps this week, 65 to 75, and overnight low temps about 52 to 60. All right, thank you, Dave. Well, a breaking update tonight on the Boundary Waters closure. Within the last few minutes, we learned the Forest Service has extended the closure through September 3rd. It was going to end this Saturday, but forest officials say four more fires have started as of yesterday. They hope this extension will help keep people safe. Well, back in Duluth, Essential Health announced today their Vision Northland project is almost halfway finished. The $900 million project will replace St. Mary's Medical Center. One of Essentia's goals for this project is to employ a diverse workforce. More than 16% of construction staff are now classified as underrepresented. This doubles their initial goal of 8%. Essentia's lead physician for the project, Dr. Robert Erickson, says he thinks the magnitude of this project contributes to such a diverse workforce. Essentia says they hope to be serving patients in this space by the end of 2023.
All right, Kelly joins us now for a preview of what's happening in sports tonight. Hey, Kelly. Yeah, it's getting to be some exciting baseball. The Brewers have a pivotal series ahead of them. If they want to get closer and closer to the pennant, sports is next. Every day during your birthday month, you can receive up to $30 in club cash. CBS3 Live Cams, brought to you by KohlerChev.com. Now featuring the Kohler Express Deal online buying solution. KohlerChev.com, a better way to buy. I guarantee you if your home just burned to the ground or you had a major accident, your first thing you're going to think about, it's not going to be, I just saved $500 on my auto and home insurance today. It's going to be, am I covered? At Vernon Insurance Agency, our first, second, and third goal is that you understand your coverage, there's no gaps in coverage, and your claims are covered when you have them. Call Vernon Insurance Agency today, 218-384-3970. I'm Dr. Matthew Penning. I'm a family physician at St. Luke's. I like to try and empower the patients to take control of their own health care. Doctors may give advice, but it's really the choice of the patients that determine the outcomes of their health care. So I think it's really important that we speak in a way that patients understand and can get information. I chose to practice at St. Luke's because it seems more like a family environment. The atmosphere at Mariner is great, so I love it here. That's a pretty tight spot. Watch this. Your Buick parks itself. That's so you. Of course you know where we're going. That's so you. Kind of got a success. And a head of display. They're here. You brought all these players in your Buick? Yep. So you. It is. At the heart of every Buick SUV is you. Pay no interest for 72 months plus current eligible Buick owners. Get 500 purchase allowance on 2021 Buick SUV models. Visit your Lake Country Buick dealer. At Super One Foods, we're always looking for new talent to join our five-star service team. We are a growing family-owned company that provides opportunities to learn new skills and enhance your working knowledge while serving your friends and neighbors. From flexible scheduling and variety in jobs to competitive wages and exceptional benefits, Super One Foods offers an excellent environment to grow both personally and professionally and can provide you with the foundation for career advancement in the communities we serve. Come join our team, Super One Foods. Jobs right in your neighborhood. Tripling up on the rock Friday night, September 24th, as Black Bear Casino Resort presents Rock the Otter 3 with Skid Row. And welcoming special guest Warrant. Plus Steelheart. Tickets available at the Players Club or online at BlackBearCasinoResort.com. Make the bear your place to rock the otter with Skid Row, Lawrence, and Steelheart. I'm leaving the studio and hitting the road. I'm making house calls. Dr. Phil! <laughs> That's a teachable moment. I'm like a dog with a bone. The difference between winners and losers is winners do things losers don't want to do. Carrying a grudge is like letting somebody live in your head for free. When you're in a hole, stop digging. And they are digging. I'm not leaving here, so you people either need to get real or set up a cot for me. CBS News Sunday Morning with Jane Pauley on CBS. Well, the Brewers have a commanding seven and a half game lead on top of the NL Central. And as we approach the last month of the season, it's looking like their division to win if they continue on their current pace. But a huge milestone starts tonight, a three game series against the Cincinnati Reds. It's the last time the clubs will meet for the rest of the regular season and could be the Reds' best chance to claw their way back into the pennant race. The Brew crew will likely lean on Christian Yelich, who has come alive in his last 11 games and has the most RBIs and home runs against Cincinnati of any player in baseball since 2018. A lot of fun when he's, when he's hitting. I mean, when he's hitting, I feel like we're, we're going as a team. Um, yeah, he's, he's been swinging the bat really well. So, uh, yeah, we definitely need him. You know, we need his entire group to, to get to where we want to be and, you know, playoffs and, you know, hopefully World Series and, uh, and just kind of go from there. But uh, the guys are doing a great job as of now, but uh, we know we must keep it going. Corbin Burns will start for Milwaukee tonight, followed by Brandon Woodruff tomorrow. The Brewers and the Reds don't get going until 7-10 tonight down at American Family Field, while the Twins are just underway out at Fenway Park. 
against the Red Sox. Well, this summer will be remembered for all the drama around Aaron Rodgers and the Packers heading into training camp. But not to be forgotten is his potential successor, Jordan Love. The second-year pro out of Utah State missed the past week of practice due to a shoulder injury, but finally returned to the field this week. Love sat out on Saturday's preseason matchup against the Jets, leaving most of the reps to Kurt Benkert. Green Bay's final preseason game is this Saturday against Buffalo, which could be his last chance at seeing the field this season. In his, if his only pre NFL preseason appearance in week one, Love was 12 of 17 for 112 yards and a touchdown with a passer rating of 122.9. Well, three of the NCAA's Power Five conferences, the ACC, the Big Ten, and the Pac-12, say they are working together on a collaborative approach surrounding the future evolution of college athletics and scheduling. The alliance was formed in the wake of Texas and Oklahoma moving from the Big 12 to the SEC. That's signaling a major shift in the collegiate sports landscape. With today's announcement, the ACC, Big 10, and Pac-12 have agreed to focus on several issues concerning collegiate athletics, including start scheduling more games with one another while maintaining their current contractual agreements. The three conference commissioners held a joint news conference today to talk about their new alliance. This last year has been monumental in college athletics. But also it's provided us with an opportunity to look forward, to come to together, and hopefully this alliance will, will really stabilize uh, the different issues that we're facing in college athletics. A group of athletic directors from all three conferences will oversee the scheduling issues between these conferences for football as well as men's and women's basketball. Now Wisconsin and Minnesota don't play this Saturday, but there is college football this yes. weekend. So... Folks, pumpkin spice season, football season. <laughs> no, it's Apparently only it's August. Back. <laughs> it's only August. I know. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> well, tonight on the CBS 3 News at 10, From Ore to Steel. That's the name of a new exhibit in Chisholm that tells the story of the discovery of ore on the Iron Range and how it's used to make the steel we use in everyday life. Make sure to join us for this special ion mining tonight on the CBS 3 News at 10. Well, Dave, are we going to see any more of that rain? Because that sure was a pretty sweet sound this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sound of rain on a roof is a, a rare thing to hear these days. Yes. You might have to play records if we still have <laughs> turntables and vinyl. Well, there's a 30 to 50% chance for some more real rain tonight. Then we get a break on Wednesday in between low pressure systems. So Wednesday should be mostly sunny and near 75 for a lot of towns. But then the rain chances come back in on Thursday. It's only a 30% chance to start, but goes towards 60% for Friday and for Saturday and then winds down a little bit by Sunday. So we got a little today, not a lot. Maybe we add up four chances for a little. We get what we need by the start of next week. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you at 10.